Hi, and my name is Marcela Ceballos, and I'm the Managing Director of Youth Mappers, a consortium of 160 student-led university chapters across 42 countries. We're funded by the USAID Geo Center, and we're organized by Texas Tech University, Arizona State University, West Virginia University, and the George Washington University. And under our banner of the Let Girls Map campaign, university students are organizing and, and, and supporting mapping initiatives that support uh, women and girls issues. And through this initiative, they have created um, really inclusive environments on their university campuses for female mappers. So today you're going to hear from six students from six of our Youth Mappers chapters in Colombia, Nepal, Ghana, Rwanda, Uganda, and Bangladesh, and learn more about the activities that they have undertaken. And first up, we have Carolina from the University of Antioquia in Colombia. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Carolina Ortega. I am a starting of environmental engineer at the University of Antioquia in Colombia. So I am a part of UMAPR chapter uh, called uh, GeoLab. So uh, we are going to talk about uh, our chapter on experience on the growing female participation in activities uh, of leaders. My youth mapper chapter uh, was uh, created to the experience um, of our faculty advisor, advisor um, Natalia da Silveira Ward. Um, we opened a stream up in Cartagena uh, in 2016 uh, and students in, in charge and willingness to learn about open source tools. Uh, I would have been uh, in terms of in these topics. Uh, we work uh, GIS and use of open source tools. And our main, okay. And our main activities uh, are collaborative mapping, uh, training for members of of group in OpenStreetMap Map platform, um, Cobo Collect, and um, Mapillary. So. Female participation. Uh, I take as a point that uh, of reference that around five percent of community that integrates a uh, open stream up are women. So this indicates that female participation yet is minimal. Um, however, as you can see, the progress three years is uh, in our chapter uh, more than half or our chapter okay our chapter members are women um i think that is due to we have our faculty advisor in the university of antioquia but also that some activities had been uh, led by women as you can see, are uh, some pictures of members in the group uh, participating in different events. Um, and I'm gonna talk about experience or activities uh, as marathons, uh, jumps trainings, participating in national and international events uh, like Hot Sami, Phosphor-G, uh, State of the Map uh, since uh, 2017. And COAS Map, Bocas de la Trato, was proposed by our regional ambassador, uh, Maria Fernanda, and this project was financed by you mappers in the last year in fellowship. Uh, uh, we we participated with a project cartographia collaborativa Hasama 2020 Cerro Moravia and sponsored by Mapillary and supporting 
uh, let gear maps in activity with activities remotely and what do we want we want to do trainings and trainings in geography information system because we think there are fundamental tools to carry out projects especially in our territory uh, we want a to continue showing our activities in social media, like Twitter or Facebook, and to motivate people from any place in the in the world. And we want to support uh, other female participation through virtual meetings and sharing experience. Uh, in their lives, ways and projects that we are carrying out. Um, it's important for you uh, that many people may know about collaborative mapping and can use in, the, in their activities. And of course, continue participating, participating in international conference like here. A very happy I'm um, ex ex exciting for be here for is my first presentation in this international event. Many thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Ernest Nakovangize. I am a student in the University of Rwanda. I am doing geo information sciences in that university. So I am representing the youth map as chapter in that university. So in that university we are a chapter that has 141 members, 58 of them are females, so our first mission there is just to contribute to the humanitarian responses just by mapping. So, and we have contributed to several projects of mapping since we have started, because our chapter has started in 2017. Since we have started, we have contributed to several projects, including the informal centrum that you have mapped in Kigari. So in terms of female inclusion in our activities, since we have started, the females were not more included, so they were not participating too much, but you have just get to the social area, we have started an initiative called Let's Help My Sister to Map. So it was just an initiative where we said, so we need to help our sisters. In the chapter, everyone from the, from the, the boys, 
He has to bring at least one girl and mentor her from mapping activities using OSM and other activities that we are doing in the chapter. So we have seen that that methodology was very successful because the number of females have really increased to the significant level. So in order to motivate the ladies to participate and show them that we are with them, so we have initiated a competition where the females they do the competition on mapping more. We just use OSM fighting so that we can know who mapped more. So to have really motivated them and they have really liked it because we have no a lot of resources, but the available one you have to try we try to give them some awards, including internet so that they can keep working even when they are outside from the university. So even though we are doing so, we have faced different challenges. Most of the challenges that we have faced, most of them it is the lack of internet. So, and uh, it was really difficult to convince people why we are mapping, why do we have to use OpenStreetMap, so, and it was really difficult to change the mindset of people. Previously, people, they have a mindset of why engaging ladies in the in the technology like that. So with those challenges, we have tried to get some solutions. So in terms of getting the internet, we've tried to be solution-oriented, where we have managed to get our own internet router so that we can work and execute our activities anytime depending on our plan without depending on the university internet, which is not always stable. So in terms of changing the mindset of people on how we can, why we are engaging readies, so we have different social medias where we share the result of the activities that the ladies are doing in the chapter. Most of the time, when we organize a competition, the results are shared to our Twitter. We have a Twitter, we have a Facebook account of our chapter, where all the results are shared. And we have seen that the community is really looking what we are doing, and they are appreciating it, and the mindset have changed to the significant level. And people, they are asking, why are you using OpenStreetMap? And why are you using free data? Why are you contributing to the project that you don't even know who have started it? But we have showed that they all need data. And you have tried to show that once the female contribute to the humanitarian responses, they are really contributing to the sustainable development, and it is really one way of enhancing the future of the science. So since we started those process, we have some reasons that you have got from the process. So we have seen that women, females, they have a lot of things to share, even to the men. They have very skills that we really need to get from them. So since we started, they really helped us in the different things which was really important. So we have seen also that when men and the women work together, they really complete the task at a, give, at a real time. The task is completed quickly. And the experience that everyone has, they share, and they can get to the result as well. So and since the women have joined at the huge number, we have seen that you have really make our work very accurate more than before. So, and we have seen that the other community have really started learning from us. One example is a way in the campus, people just started saying, why don't we copy the way the students are 
using to help their sisters so that we can do the same. Do you have one example where the, 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 the lecturers, they have to publish researches, and most of the ladies from the, the, the researchers are not publishing too much. So they said, why don't we have to copy from those students where all the lecturers will be helping the others so that they can publish many things. So I think whatever we are doing, it will be more positive if, as like men, we support women. Thank you very much. My name is Confidence. Sorry. Yeah. My name is Confidence, and I'm from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. I'm a member of the UCC Youth Mapers. That's University of Cape Coast Youth Mapers, in short, UCC Youth Mapers. We are we have been in existence for two years now, and we are the first inaugural chapter of the Youth Mapers Network that's outside the US. Our goal is to have a platform where students can come to learn and offer their services to address humanitarian issues through mapping. We believe in voluntarism, hence we are youth mappers. Our activities ranges from having mappathons, training sessions in open source software and open source tools, engaging in global competitions, as well as embarking on collaborations with organizations to use spatial data in their projects. Oh, so let's girls map. UCC Youth Mappers has been an advocate for Let Girls Map for two years now. Uh, Annual participation in Let Girls Map Mapathons and activities shows that we are dedicated to bridging the digital gender divide. To help increase inclusive female participation in our chapter, we have put in place certain measures to help that, really, that dream come true. And the first measure we have put in place is to hold an all-female training sessions in preparation for Let Girls Map Mapathons. And these training sessions provide us with the opportunity to interact in an all-female environment, which is quite friendly, and we get to learn from each other's strengths, so we draw from our strengths and grow stronger together as female mappers. We have invited guest lecturers to come around to give talks, to give us career uh, choices that the female mapper has. They've let us know that as a female mapper, we do not have to let our gender be a limitation to how much we can contribute to maps or to open street map. We have also had, just this year, uh, two female mappers from our chapter being selected to participate in the 2019 Youth Mappers Leadership Fellowship in South Africa. UCC Youth Mappers has won the Youth Mappers Award for increasing women participation in the chapter for two years in a row. That's 2017 and 2018, respectively. Uh, in 2018, we had 24 chapters of the Youth Mappers Network winning that award out of the total 160 chapters, and UCC Youth Mapers was one of them. Despite our achievements and the measures put in place to help increase inclusive female participation in the chapter, we still have certain challenges we do face. And the major challenge we have is the perception of GIS being too difficult and a male-dominated field. In Ghana, most of our females tend to shy away from science and technology because they believe it's too complicated, it's too complex, so they can't do it. It's just the males. Let's leave it for the males to do it. And stepping into the GIS field is also in the realm of science and technology, so they, they tend to think the same thing. And so to address this challenge, what we do is we provide motivation via the guest lecturers we do invite to the chapter to be able to motivate our female mappers to let them know that yes, they can do it. Yes, they can also do it. If the male mappers are doing it, yes, they can also do it. And provide assistance to help reduce such perceptions that the female mappers have. There's also the problem of poor internet connectivity. 
poor internet connection does hamper our training sessions and our mapathon sessions. So we are unable to contribute as we want. So let's say a female mapper comes to a mapathon and she wants to contribute. She's working on the tasking manager. A task has loaded. She wants to map in JOSM, but then she has finished mapping and then internet starts messing up. So she's unable to upload her work to the OpenStreetMap server and that can deter her from actually participating in or, or contribute her data or her time to youth mappers activity. To address that issue, we tend to come later in the evening. Since most of our mapathon sessions, we rely on the campus Wi-Fi network. We will come later in the evening when the traffic is so low, so as to be able to contribute without any problems. Yes. There's also the problem of integrating voluntary youth mappers activity with academic work. Youth mappers is a, it's a multidiscipline network, it's a multidiscipline group. We have students coming from different disciplines, music, geography, science, it's not just the geosciences students. And since it's in the university, there's a problem of, there's a conflict of schedules. People have different schedules. And so it does not allow our female mappers to come together to contribute as they should. So we would want the full component of our female mappers to come around. And to do that, we relegate all our mapping activities to the weekend where there's no conflict of schedule. So every, uh, every female mapper would be available and around to contribute as they should. From our challenges, from our achievements, we've had certain lessons that we've gathered from it. And the first and major point we've gathered is that problems can also be an opportunity. Through the problems we have faced, our female mappers has faced, we have learned that it gives us the opportunity to do creative thinking. We come up with various solutions that can address the problems our female mappers face. And they are working as well. I'm sure that's why we've won the Youth Mappers Award for increasing female participation for two years in a row. There's also the lesson we've learned that problems aren't solved in isolation. That's why we tend to invite guest lecturers to come around to motivate our female mappers to let us know that indeed gender is not a limitation. You can contribute. It doesn't matter what gender you are. And with that with that lesson, I believe that it's a work that should be done hand in hand. It's not just supposed to be related to, relegated to the, sorry, the female mappers. We can have male mappers coming together to encourage female mappers that, yeah, we can do it. You guys can do it. We are doing it. You can do it. So it should be done hand in hand. And I think the last point is one that cuts across to female mappers all over the world. As a female mapper, it may seem tough in the beginning, but one thing you should know that you should not give up. Just keep pushing. Just keep going. You can make it. You can do it. You can contribute. You can make a difference wherever you are. And so as female mappers, I would leave us with the word that there's a lot we can do. There's a lot we should do as female mappers. Let's just keep going. And I'll leave with one more motto. Let's, so today, as you go out, encourage a female mapper. Thank you. Okay, I'll hold it in my hand. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Aman Casey, and I'm from Nepal. I represent my youth mapper chapter, Geomatics Engineering Student Association of Nepal in Trivan University. Uh, let me add briefly about our chapter. Uh, it's a chapter formed among the students studying geomatics engineering in Pashtimanchal campus in Trivan University. Uh, there are a total of 192 students in our chapter, out of which 28 are females. Our chapter was established with the motto Geomatics for Sustainable Development and has been conducting to promote geospatial field in the sustainability. Uh, similarly, we also assist and volunteers with NGOs and local bodies like municipalities, rural municipalities, to help them map their wards, their municipalities. And we also organize uh, trainings for our first year students so that they get used to OSM, even they don't know at the initial phase. Similarly, we also publish our annual magazine, GeoWorld, where we combine like the articles from the students and professors where they publish their uh, 
uh, research in, in the geospatial field. Uh, okay, now let me add about our add about our chapter and female participation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our chapter belongs from an engineering background, and that's quite a challenge to you know include more females because there are lesser number of females enrolled in our chapter. And but we have made every possible effort to engage all the members who are associated with our chapter. Uh, so we have like we have passed an act where one of the vital positions, one of the five vital positions in our chapter, is fixed for a female. Similarly, the two of the six executive members are fixed for the female. So it's like three of the positions of the eleven most prestigious. Po are fixed for the females. Uh, so something we are proud of our female members is Women in Geospatial Development. It's an annual event that is organized in Kathmandu by ECMOD where our female members go there and participate and learn about geospatial technologies, development in that field, and they come back to our chapter and like, they share about what they learned and how can, uh, it can be you know, motivated to all other female students as well. Uh, similarly, we also had our female members uh, led the campaign "Let Girls Literate." So they were charged with, so they were responsible for, uh, you know, going to the high schools and teaching about the maps, not just the maps, OSM maps as well, like Maps.me. So they haven't heard of that, but when our female members taught about that, they got to know about Maps.me, offline maps. Similarly, we also organize Mapathon events under the Lead Girls Map Task and Women Connect Challenge. During this whole, you know, organizing the females, charging them with responsibilities, we faced some problems, and we learned from our problems as well. So what were the challenges faced? The first was the lack of female influencers at the university level. So there was like no any females so they can like look up to and like they were like, I'm gonna, I want to be like her. There was no one. So they were not like expressing themselves to go there and step up. Uh, similarly, lack of leadership experience. Uh, before the high school, nobody was, you know, like, uh, no, I want to go there and be like a leader. That was something that lacked among the students in our chapter. Also, they were not comfortable in the spotlight. Uh, they was like, uh, I'm okay being here. I will walk from here. I don't want to be in position. But we came up with a solution, luckily. Uh, so, okay, it's missing one point, but I will add here. The first solution was introducing them to the global influencers. So if we like open the Youth Mappers website, we have like four of the females. They can help. You can like you can be like her. She is like changing the world. You can be like her. That was the solution. You knew, even though they were not influencers at the university level, but at global influencers can help them. Uh, similarly, we were, the females were charged with the responsibilities and uh, duties to organize the programs, uh, to conduct the activities. Um, so, for, for an example, we published the annual magazine GeoWorld annually, and so they were like. Uh, they were given the responsibility to collect some sponsors for our magazine, and uh, when they did, they were more confident in themselves. They were ready to, okay, I'm gonna take the next responsibility. I'm gonna do next, give me the task. So that was very positive impact we faced. Okay, uh, this is for higher female inclusion. What we learned can be a lesson for others, and it's a lesson for us as well. Uh, as we said earlier, we can inspire the females, uh, the local actually, uh, by introducing them to role models and how can they change the community, the nation and the entire world. Uh, we should engage them in decision making, create the sustainable roles for them and value the decisions. Like they feel like I'm being valued, I want to be get involved more. What we did was charge them with executive responsibilities. We like fixed the positions for the female members and they were like ready to take the responsibilities afterwards. Uh, it might be hard to get females at the initial phase. Uh, uh, why should I go there? So in the initial phase we can organize like female-centered competitions where they can be more interested towards the competitions. After they get to it, they might get more interested about the actual mapping field. Uh, similarly, we can take internet on our side because everybody uses internet now. So they can like uh, youth mappers, 
female members can contribute and like publish their uh, experience, their uh, mapping activities through blogs, Facebooks. There are tons of social media sites now, so it gets access to all. Everybody can use them. I guess this is it. I'm very honored to be here, and we ensure that our chapter will always try to engage female mappers more. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Kalua Maiko. I'm a student at Bustema University. Uh, it is found in East Africa, I mean in Eastern Uganda. And I'm uh, a member and the president, the current president of the Youth Mappers chapter there called Good Mappers. Uh, it was started in 2014 and it was certified by Youth Mappers in 2016 around September. Uh, we've, uh, we've we are a youth mappers chapter that has contributed and has been so much involved into the contributions onto the open street, open street map. And uh, there is the list of some of the projects that we worked on. Uh, we, we had a financial inclusion uh, 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 competition, I, I mean uh, project, uh, that was around 2014, 2015. Uh, we had a malaria elimination competition, I mean that uh, it was a malaria elimination project now uh, where we, we, we had to, to, call to, to participate and we managed to participate from phase one up to the third phase. Uh, we've as well gone into deep to involve the female where we have a, a project that uh, because in uh, this, uh, the malaria elimination, we won some prizes because we were one of the best. So we, we won some cash and that cash, we've used it, we used it to start a project where we had to involve in a uh, female, that is uh, secondary school girls, and that project still runs. Uh, those girls, uh, we've uh, made a partnership with the, with the school administration, so they provide us some time. We go there and train the girls. So that project is still running, uh, and we mainly go there over the weekends. Uh, we, as well, at the university, at the campus, we involve in girls by uh, involve them, involving them into mapathons and competitions. And through those mapathons, to, 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 to encourage them to join more, we give them some uh, praises, mainly to the, to, the, to the best contributors of the day, like the OSM swag where we give you something to encourage you. Uh, we have as well trained the girls, uh, those are the ladies, because some of those girls use uh, the OSM uh, skills into their final year projects, that is after the, uh, they are finishing up their courses. Uh, as well, we've engaged them into leadership. Uh, we, we have six uh, top leadership positions and three of them are ladies. We have as well had some challenges, uh, some of the challenges which we've gotten some solutions as well, though others not yet. Uh, we've lacked some mapping equipment, though we had some mapping equipment by 2014, 2015, but some of them are old now. They can't do the, perform the tasks very well. As well as uh, the phones uh, that we had are now old. So you find that he, uh, when you are to conduct maybe a field map, you have to look around for good phones from other people. Uh, we've as well lacked some finances because you, you see that uh, some of our internets at the, the universities are not good. When you are to organize a marathon, you have to look around for resources. And you know, when people come, you don't want them to go hungry. You have to look around for some other resources like breakfast or lunch. And as, uh, at our university, you find that uh, men are more than ladies. 
uh, with a ratio of one to four. You find that every, uh, every four men, there is one lady. So it is a challenge uh, because some ladies fear to, to get involved uh, in big numbers of, of men. Uh, we, the prizes we, so the prizes, as I talked about it, the prizes we won, they, they have actually they helped us a lot because we won a projector. Uh, that one helps us in, through the training. Uh, yes. Uh, for large communities, We've, uh, as well, uh, we can say that uh, it, the bigger communities are hard to, to manage because around the university we have other people like the university administration which is interested. Uh, and the good enough, uh, our patron of the Youth Mappers chapter is an IT uh, lecturer. So we get some advantages when it comes maybe to internet. He can give you access to the computer lab maybe over the weekends. So it has. It has done as well. So our community has as well gained a lot of skills and uh, we've not given up uh, on them. We go back and talk to them uh, about the challenge because we train some of those, uh, the staff, they get involved in our, in our trainings. Uh, they, they have gained as well a lot of skills in mapping and validation. So. The, the, these people, uh, uh, like we've managed to raise other people. We have an example because most chapters don't have someone to look onto, but at least for us we have. At least Shamira who works with, with Hot Uganda, she's from our chapter. So he, he, she's a good example to, to the ladies. She encourages them for, for them to be involved. I thank you so much. I don't know if there is any question, but that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I am Shaun Shariar from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I am here to present our chapter activities. Youth members, Dhaka College chapter is an all boys chapter in Bangladesh. We are started our journey in 2016 with only eight students, but now we have 94 actively mapping students mappers. What do we do? Actually, arranging monthly mapathons, trainings, and seminars for the newcomers and the existing mappers, and collaboration with other chapters, OpenStreetMap Bangladesh foundations, and local communities. Nowadays, we are working on the what microgrant map the dams to collecting waste disposal po uh, point in Dhaka cities. We have added more than 3 million buildings and 20,000 kilometer highways as well as uh, many other uh, features in OpenStreetMap and provided around 25 trainings to around 300 mappers. As a result, our 14 mappers took the place with first, third, sixth ranked on Missing Maps Global Leaderboard. And the rest of the part is in top 50. And we have awarded some uh, awards from challenges and it is uh, really a uh, very challenging part to work with female for all boys institute. Our society has a out, uh, conservative outlook to treat, uh, treating uh, gender equality, but we believe in gender equality and it is the main uh, key of uh, every successful achievement. We have decided to do that uh, for the sustainable community. 
So what do we do? Uh, ensure a safe environment to the female and help uh, and provide a training to women in local chapters and education institute like uh, out of the uh, chapter education institute like uh, Bragg University, Raffodil University, okay. collaboration with OpenStreetMap Foundation and Bangladesh Humanitarian OpenStreetMap Operational Team, Community Knows and Booth Team to increase female uh, participation in mapping. As a result, we have got more than 100 female mappers with top three contributor on Missing Maps Global Leaderboard. We have uh, some uh, challenges. Uh, I said it before that uh, our chapter is uh, all boys chapters. So engaging uh, female outside of an all boys institute, it is a very uh, big challenge. Um, our conservative society is uh, another challenge, but we did it. Uh, make a safe environment for the female and women, uh, especially uh, another uh, challenge is uh, women are not exposed to those technologies in other field of study in our country. Have some uh, solution and we uh, give some lessons from uh, these uh, activities. Clear vision of benefits of a participation uh, and ensure them a safe environment to the uh, female. And it is uh, another uh, solution is all boys should be heard and make a sustainable, effective plan for them. And we said it uh, that for the uh, successful achievement, we have more passion, dedication, as well as collaboration and contribution. Thank you. I know we only have a few um, minutes, but if we do have any questions from the audience while you have young people um, in the room, um, we'd love to open it up to questions. So maybe if you guys want to head to the front, um, we'll just take maybe five minutes or so. If you have questions, let me know and I'll come to the mic because we need to have the mic. Um, and then just to let you know, um, these students will also be giving a presentation on Monday at State of the Map, um, talking about how um, communities and organizations can um, explicitly include youth in mapping activities that are happening um, around the world. So if you have questions, I will come to the mic. Last question. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning, but um, there we go. Thank you. Um, what is the Youth Mappers Network's role in helping you in these efforts for um, gender diversity? Thank you. Um, so let me introduce myself first. Actually, can you hear me? Is that working? It doesn't have a speaker. Oh, okay, so teacher voice. Um, so I'm Patricia Solis, and I'm the director of Youth Mappers and a co-founder and uh, at, at Arizona State University. Um, and the question was, what are some of the things that Youth Mappers Network is doing to support female participation? I think you've heard a few of those, actually. <laughs> um, the role model, um, we do promote you know, female role models within our network. We have a blog where we really heavily feature female voices. I think it's really important. Today you heard them from their voices. I think that is one of the best things that we can do for young people. Let them speak in their own voices. Make sure that they are heard um, and amplify, basically amplify those voices. We just uh, do a lot of it making sure that that's got a lot of gender balance. Through the 160 chapters, um, more 25% of them 
more or less 25% of them have more than 50% female participation, and we give them awards every year for when they have, and we recognize that, really. So um, sort of that high level, again, amplifying and recognition of their voices. Uh, we actually partnered with HOT on this grant. We are a partner to that. We did the Let Girls Map campaign. We started that actually from the Let Girls Learn initiative. Um, uh, Michelle Obama was kind of the spark for that one. And we do that every year from March through October to help organize specific tasks, promote those kinds of tasks. Um, so just ki kind of that information network and recognition and trying to be a platform for all of that. Uh, when we do do our fellowships, we also absolutely make sure that we have balanced participation in all our fellowships and all of our programming. I, I just had a quick question. Every one of you mentioned internet as being a problem and are, is there like an easy solution for that um, at your universities or is it just the infrastructure and the internet is poor? Um, so in UCC, we mostly we rely on the university campus Wi-Fi, but when it is poor, that's because there's a lot of traffic on it. Because during the daytime, we have a lot of students on campus, and they are all using the Wi-Fi. And most of the remedy we would use is to come later in the evening when the, wi the traffic on the Wi-Fi is reduced, so we can easily use it without any hassle, including our And Recently, we are coming up with people are affording to buy their own data, mobile data, so they could use it to map and not rely on the campus Wi-Fi. We're also looking into looking at one of the telecom networks. They have some sort of router, I think, MiFi. Yeah, we are looking into that. That's 4G, so we could have it and not rely on the campus Wi-Fi. Um. First of all, I know time's short, but a quick comment. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. There are, I'm just going to be frank and call it out, there are organizations uh, in and around this community that have ample more resources than you do and are not accomplishing half of what you're achieving. So you are sincerely leading by example, and thank you for it. So my question then is this, what, uh, for all of you, uh, anyone who chooses to answer, what, what can the hot community do to support you? Yes, I'm, I'm Michael from Good Mappers, uh, Uganda. And um, what I can ask her to do for us is employing us. Any other questions? Can I ask a quick one? Yeah, I just want to echo. Thank you guys so much. I was wondering if anything... Um, after doing this work and thinking about these questions, if that has influenced any other spheres in your life or if you've thought about anything else you're doing a little differently or maybe done something differently because of the work you guys have done on this project. Yeah, so, as a member of Youth Mappers, I had an internship in uh, Lands Commission Ghana. They basically do land tenure system. We measure parcels of land and then upload it on the government server. And when I got there, they were like, no, you are a girl. You can't go to the field. You can't take survey. So, you, we are keeping you in the administration office. You just be typing. And when I mentioned <laughs> I was reading geography and regional planning, they were like, no, you'd have to be reading geomatics, like GIS know that the program is indeed GIS but they didn't they, like in Lands Commission they have reserved most of the surveying and cartographic and GIS work for people reading the GIS and geomatics yeah the big big ones they reserve it for them so when I was in administration once and we had some of the surveyors come in they would come up with their laptops with some imagery working it out 
And I would be there, I'll be like, oh, okay. Why don't you there's open street? My why do you have to carry that big? They have some big and heavy. They have with a smartphone, you can just go to the field and do it. And with that, I had one, I had, I was assigned to a supervisor, but then one colleague supervisor was like, he'll take me to the field because if I have expertise in this, then I can do it. As we were talking. So as we were talking, he asked, where did I get the skills? And I said, youth mappers. So from there, I was telling them about the youth mappers. They went to read about it and got to know what we do. And feed the future. As UCC youth mappers, we, I mentioned we have, uh, we have collaborated with certain institutions using spatial data. Uh, I think early this year in February, we had a project, a collaboration with USAID Feed the Future we took to mapping out the soybean processing facilities in Kumasi and its environs. And that was quite insightful. We got to understand the soybean value chain in Ghana, where it comes from, the source, the processing facilities, and then the end consumers. That was quite insightful. We got to know that soybean is rising to become at least one of the major cash crops in Ghana and is boosting Ghana's economy. Yeah. Okay, I'll add about how it affected my personal life, actually. i give you an example. Uh, like we were, I told you we published the annual magazine, GeoWorld. And so we were, I, I was secretary for the year 2018-19 and we were like collecting sponsors and taking the propos proposals and going like, please have a look at it. If you want, you can sponsor. But at the initial stages, it was like, no, we will not look at it. Or like, you can call us later, but they never called us back. And like, and but at the initial stages, we were like, oh, shoot, this is not going to work. But we did stick with our motto. We worked. And I guess I learned that we should never give up if we had clear vision. That's what I learned. I just have a question to the youth mappers. Uh, like, like, uh, is there any uh, hardware support program from the youth mappers, like giving the laptops or internet? Like, uh, in uh, India, India, Google does support the uh, growing the uh, in Indian languages Wikipedia by su supporting 150 laptops and 100 internet connections to the contributors. So, is there any plans for the youth mappers to support with the hardware? We don't have program. Uh, we don't. Um, we rely a lot on the universities and that was one of the design uh, acid elements of youth mappers is, you know, at using the university labs. Most of them have computer labs. Most of them have internet connections. So all of our chapters are formally approved by their university so that they get access to that. Um, that's not to say it fills every need, um, but certainly we, we do get, especially field work. They don't have a lot of equipment for field work. I don't have a plan for that. I'm happy to listen to it. All right. Thank you, everyone. And if anyone here is in touch with university students that are not affiliated with Youth Mappers, please reach out to one of our speakers. Please reach out to us if you uh, feel that they would be interested in joining Youth Mappers. The affiliation process is very easy and very straightforward. Thanks.